Hi folks, welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. Today I want to take a look at a paper from the Hot Topics in Operating Systems workshop from 2021. And this paper looks at how to incrementally make the Linux kernel safer. You might have heard that recently Linus Torvalds finally gave his approval to start introducing Rust into the Linux kernel. And so far, the plan is to do that only for leaf modules, which is to say modules that nothing else depends on. So most device drivers would fall into that category. This paper does not take a look at the details of that integration, but takes a step back and looks at why we would want to do it, what's a good strategy to do so, and what the challenges are. To start with, you have to recognize what a huge success the Linux kernel has been. It is by far one of the most impactful and largest open source software projects in the world. And it's used on everything from mobile phones with Android to servers in data centers and everything else in between. It has a huge number of contributors and about 1.5 million lines of code are added to it every year. There is a flip side to this, which is that C being what it is, there are a lot of vulnerabilities and exploits that are found in the kernel on a pretty regular basis. So here the authors have some graphs about the number of vulnerabilities reported over time in the Linux kernel. And you can see this graph over here. And also how long a module or a subsystem has been in existence versus how many vulnerabilities are reported in it. Now, one would think that old and mature subsystems, like, for example, the ext4 file system, would have shaken out their bugs and have very few vulnerabilities reported recently. But the fact is that about half of the vulnerabilities in ext4 were found after seven or more years of use. So that goes to show that even mature subsystems in the Linux kernel have a steady clip of vulnerabilities being found in them. One option would be to say, all right, we've had enough security vulnerabilities. Let's throw away the Linux kernel and build a new safe kernel from scratch. With the amount of effort that's gone into the Linux kernel and the complexity of OS functionality that it handles and the number of device drivers that are part of it, the path of starting over is simply infeasible. The authors have this graph over here of operating systems that meet various types of safety guarantees versus how large their code base is. And Linux is on the left over here, which has virtually no guarantees with a very huge code base. FreeBSD is somewhat similar. And then you have a raft of OS kernel attempts that have tried to build a safer operating system kernel, often using safe languages to start with. So for example, the Singularity project at Microsoft tried to build a kernel on top of the .NET runtime. We have Biscuit, which built a kernel using the Go programming language. We have Theseus, which built a kernel in Rust. I have videos on all three of those, by the way. So I'll link to those in the description. And you can see the approach that those systems took in order to build a kernel with safety guarantees from the ground up. However, you'll notice on this graph that Linux and FreeBSD are the only two kernels that have any real world usage. And even between the two of them, Linux is way, way ahead of FreeBSD. And pretty much all the other systems here that have some kind of better safety guarantees are only research systems with zero or no adoption in the real world. So we see that the only realistic path left is to try and make the Linux kernel safer in an incremental manner without throwing away any parts of it. We can start with maybe making device drivers safer and then grow outwards from there. The key idea that the authors here are proposing is to have incrementally safer interfaces. 
that retain compatibility with the existing code base. And once you have safe interfaces, you can start replacing some of the C implementation behind those interfaces with a safer language implementation. When we say we want to make the Linux kernel safer, what exactly do we mean? What are the kinds of properties we're looking for? There are three main things. The first most basic one is type safety. The Linux kernel being written in C has tons of logic that just does raw pointer arithmetic as you can imagine at a systems level. But even within that, if you look at the source code, there are so many places where just void star pointers, which are totally devoid of any types, are being passed around and interpreted. So the very first basic step is to have some level of type safety in your code. The next level up from that is ownership safety. When we talk about type safety, we also kind of imply memory safety, which means that we don't access memory in undefined or invalid ways. So for example, in C, it's perfectly valid to say dereference a null pointer, which will make your program crash, or to just read raw memory and cast it to a totally different type. When we talk about ownership safety, we're adding guarantees for safe multi-threaded access as well. And together, type safety and ownership safety eliminate a huge class of bugs. Things like invalid memory accesses, buffer overruns, using memory after it has been freed, null referencing, that entire class of bugs is eliminated if you use a language that has type safety and ownership safety. Now, if you know Rust, you'll see that these two properties are exactly the things that Rust advertises as its selling points. And then the final level of safety is functional correctness and having some proven guarantee that your design or your implementation of a given spec is correct. Now, this goes into things like formally proving that your design and your code are correct. I personally think that's a bit too far-fetched and that type and ownership safety are the more realistic things to shoot for. The whole enterprise really turns on defining safe interfaces. We need to define interfaces that don't take in or out these totally raw, untyped void star pointers and instead have well-defined typed interfaces. The next goal of ownership sharing is a bit more challenging because it is very common in Linux kernel code to pass around pointers to shared memory and then rely on the right locking discipline in the code to ensure that accesses to that shared memory are done in the proper way. That is, different threads aren't clobbering each other's writes or different threads aren't reading incorrect or inconsistent information out of shared memory. The proposal to deal with it, again, turns on interfaces. And the idea is to be able to explicitly within your interface definitions, specify and restrict and make explicit what the ownership model of the parameters or return values is. Some people have brought up concerns that if we use another language like Rust in the Linux kernel, it's not going to have the same performance as C and it's going to be slower. However, if you take the specific case of Rust, we see that it's generally about the same performance as C. But also, when you look at this question, you have to think about the, the price paid for security. What is the downside of dealing with this constant stream of vulnerabilities? And what are the benefits of writing your kernel in a way that eliminates entire classes of these bugs and vulnerabilities? Of course, with a huge project like the Linux kernel, this is not going to be an easy task. The kernel is already huge, and on top of that, it's growing at a very fast pace. However, the encouraging thing is that 
if you look at the RFC on the Linux kernel mailing list that talks about introducing Rust, it is very much an incremental approach, which is also what the authors in this paper are proposing. The idea is that for every incremental piece of work put into making a small part of the kernel safer, you see a small incremental benefit and then you can keep building on that. So that was a quick look at why you would want to write parts of the Linux kernel in a safer language such as Rust, what the goals of such a project would be and what challenges such a project would face, but also what the ultimate benefits would be. So I hope you enjoyed that and I will see you next time. Thank you.